didn't have last season. Brandstater trying to take advantage of his speedy receivers. And right now, that ball is on the ground. Devin Wiley made the catch. But unfortunately, he fumbled it. And DeAndre Levy able to recover that fumble. He had an interception in the first half, and now Fresno State costly errors. Well, they're hurting themselves with those turnovers. Two turnovers earlier led to 10 points. Now another turnover. Levy picks this one up, and uh, now they're already in position. 21-yard line with a very short field. Chance to score again. Shane Carter coming in and making this hit that causes the fumble. That's Chris Carter's little brother. Our current colleague as an ESPN NFL analyst. Fresno State is challenging the previous play. So Pat Hill wants them to take another look at that. I don't think he's going to like the result of this challenge. You, you mentioned Chris Carter. And uh, his brother, Shane Carter, playing for Wisconsin. And Chris Carter's son, I believe, and and committed to playing at Ohio State. Why do you see There is Shane Carter coming in. Last year, he led the Big Ten in interceptions. That ball's out. That's a catch. He turned. He's got possession of it. And that ball's out. This is some fine defensive football right there. So Pat Hill says, hey, we really need this to not go against us. He challenges it. Well, he's he's going to lose a timeout here. You know, 10 points off turnovers for Wisconsin. Last week against Marshall. You remember they got down 14 zip against Marshall. Then Wisconsin forced three third quarter turnovers. So similar formula being applied here tonight. Get after that ball come the second half. It was 10 zip at the half. And then Fresno State, Devon Wiley had a 47 yard touchdown reception to close the gap. They had momentum with the block punt. But since then, things have started to go against them. They turned the ball over trying to field a punt. And now this fumble here, if it is upheld. And it is right now a one possession game. For Fresno State, they're only down six points. If they lose this challenge, they really have to hold Wisconsin to a field goal. Emotionally, a touchdown by Wisconsin here will probably take the crowd back out of the game. Agreed. Right now at 13-7, hey, one possession game. 16-7, still very much manageable. 20-7, to they could deflate this home crowd the way they were for much of the first half. Here's another look. Uh, to me that he clearly had possession of it. He caught that ball, took a step, put it away, turned up field with possession, and then it gets punched out by Shane Carter. So I don't think that's an incomplete pass. It's taking a long time to look it over. Yeah. That's one of the, the issues with replay. It shouldn't take this long. I know that they, they try to get it done within two minutes. This, we're over two minutes now. Let's check in with our field level analyst, Ed Cunningham. You know, Joe, uh, Joe, the point you made about the momentum change, that is exactly why Pat Hill. The previous play is reversed. Wow. That is exactly why Pat Hill took that timeout. He looked up on the board. Rod, I agree with you. I don't think that that was an incomplete pass. Pat Hill was expecting that to be reviewed upstairs. He kept going out to the referee saying, are you going to call it? Are you going to call it? I don't think he really wanted to take the timeout, but he realized, Joe, exactly what you were saying. If Wisconsin gets the ball and scores, this game could change Ed completely. Rod, do you remember the discussion that happened earlier this week about the officials that were assigned to this game? Wisconsin did not want to have WAC officials assigned to this yep. game. They said, let's swap. Let's bring our guys here for this year. When you come back to our place, you can have your guys. WAC officials here tonight. I, I don't know how you make that call. To me, that is clearly a fumble. 